Hi everyone, Ali Maz here, Global Ambassador from Lululemon. Today I'm gonna to bring you through a beginner flow. And this flow not isn't necessarily easy, but it's a flow that's gonna get you to your yoga practice somewhere else when you actually have an idea of what's going on. So I'm gonna go through some basics, um, slow down a little bit more explained so that you feel confident walking into a yoga practice anywhere else. So we're gonna get started. Um, today I'm gonna use two blocks, but these blocks could easily be books that you have. Um, you could use a water bottle for a f a certain things. So I'm gonna kind of take you through what that will look like, but we're gonna start seated. The reason why I love blocks for beginners is that sitting sometimes is one of the biggest obstacles. So today I'm gonna place two blocks. This could be cushions or blankets, whatever you have. And I'm gonna sit up nice and tall on them. So that when I cross my legs, my knees are a lot lower than my pelvis. And this takes off a lot of the pressure that people feel sitting. So just know that. And if, especially if you're going to a yoga practice, look for props, look for blocks, because that will definitely give you um, just a little bit of support and for you to feel a bit more comfortable. So I'm in Sukhasana, which is easy sitting pose. I've got ankle crossed um, on top of ankle this way. This feels really good for me, but if you're feeling like not working out so much, you can also try kneeling um, this way. So I've got my knees together, my shins are a bit wider, and I'm still seated up on blocks. So go ahead, finding sort of your own position here and figuring out what's gonna serve you best. Often in most yoga practices, we start with a grounding. And this is just a way to kind of make some space around our day and really feel like we've arrived in our bodies and on our yoga mats. So the first part of the practice is just something really simple that I'm gonna take you through. If you're not comfortable yet closing your eyes, it's totally fine, you can keep them open. So we'll start placing the hands just comfortably on the legs. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just whatever feels good. A note here is that when the palms are facing up, this is um, sort of more about bringing the energy in. It has sort of this feeling of um, receiving. So often if I'm more tired, my palms will face up and this is sort of like I'm ready <laughs> to receive energy and feel good. When palms face down, it's a bit more of a grounding energy. So if you've had a really busy day and your thoughts are kind of all over the place and things feel chaotic, I'll often go with palms down. And that's just a simple little tool um, to help sort of meet you wherever you're at in the practice. So I'm gonna go palms facing down. And then you're gonna work to sit up as tall as you possibly can. So grounding down through your seat, lifting up through the crown of your head. And then at this point, you can close your eyes or you can keep them open with me. And then you're just focusing on your breath. It's really simple. There's no sort of trick to this. It's just simply listening and feeling where the breath is living inside of your body. And generally we wanna to start to move the cadence of the rhythm of the breath for about four counts for the inhale and four counts for the exhale. And so see if you can find that now. And that might be a little bit of a slower and deeper breath than you're used to, and that's great. And we want the breath to relax the body and bring the mind to the present moment. And so this is our way of just preparing ourselves for the movement. I'm just going to take three more breaths here. And as you exhale, just relaxing, softening your shoulders. And the inhale is just bringing more oxygen, more nutrients into your brain, into your cells. And the exhalation is just releasing any tension or any sort of thoughts that are still remaining. And we'll take one more. And we'll exhale all the way out. Now I like to pull my hands together in front of my heart and this is just an intentional moment that you'll often find at the beginning of yoga practices. A teacher might say, set your intention. And for me, this is really about why are you on your mat today? So just take a moment and just sort of check in. Why are you here? Why are you watching this video? What is it that you need from your yoga practice? Um, and that could just be to learn or just to receive or be open. So just take a moment to set the intention. And when you've completed that, you can release your hands, lift your head, open your eyes, and we're gonna start on our hands and knees. 
And if you have your blocks, you can just move them to the side. And we're gonna start in tabletop. And in our tabletop position, we want to find um, our, that our shoulders are directly over our wrists. And you wanna spread the fingertips and really sort of grip the mat. Often the biggest complaint with beginners in starting yoga is that their wrists really hurt. And I find that just bringing in some gentle pressure into the hands helps to protect the wrists. Another thing you wanna pay attention to is this L shape of the hand really needs to root down. When that part gets a little bit lazy, the pressure ends up on the outer edges of the hands and you're gonna to start to feel um, the wrists begin to hurt. So let's find nice grip in the hands, shoulders over wrists, walk the knees back underneath your hips and tuck the toes. The first basic posture is cat cow. Inhale opens the chest up and the exhale rounds the spine, tucks chin into chest. Finding this at your own pace, inhaling to open and exhaling to round. A lot of yoga um, classes will link the breath and the movement. And so I like, or I like um, cat cow because it starts to do that for you. So paying attention to breath and body. See if you can move those two things together and just know that it's gonna be normal. Thoughts are gonna enter the mind. You're gonna forget about the breath sometimes. That is totally normal and okay. We just want to come back to the breath as much as we can because that's what's going to create the presence. So we're going to come back to neutral spine. Untuck the toes and take the knees as wide as your mat and then sit your hips back and walk the hands forward. This is known as child's pose. Where the blocks can be really handy here is placing a block between your forehead and the mat because sometimes the forehead doesn't touch and again, Totally fine. The other place you could pop your block is between your heels um, and your sit bones, and that will take some pressure off the knees as well. So you can go ahead and fiddle around with the posture, see what feels good for you. Breathing here in your child's pose, stretching out your spine. And child's pose is a really grounding pose. It's a really nice way if you're feeling a little anxious or a little overwhelmed. Taking a child's pose can really help and support that. And then we're gonna come up onto our hands and to our knees. And we're gonna find downward facing dog, which is often the most confusing posture and the most used posture. You'll often hear teachers say that downward facing dog is a resting pose. It definitely does not feel like that in the beginning. So just know that this is a challenging posture. So. From tabletop as a reference, take your hands forward so you can see that there's a diagonal here in my hands and my arms. Tuck the toes and then send your hips up so you are in an upside down V shape. And then bend your knees here a lot. We're still gripping with the fingertips so that we have a nice connection in the hands. And then instead of trying to straighten the legs, because what will happen is that your back will round like this, I prefer you to bend your knees and send your hips back so you create this nice long line of energy in the spine. Now this is toning the muscles in the body. It's also really good for your bones. And you want to make sure that in the challenge of this posture, you are breathing. And just be here for one more breath if you can. If you ever need release, the knees can just drop down to the floor at any time. Now we're going to look forward and we're just going to tippy toe the feet to the top of the mat. And when you come to the top of the mat, you want to measure hips distance apart. And the easiest way to do that is to take two fists, bend your knees a lot and stick those two fists between your feet. And that is going to be your measure, your fit for um, your forward fold. So find that now. You want your second toes to point straight ahead so you have nice parallel feet. And again, blocks or even water bottle here. It can work really well just to create a little bit of space. So this makes your arms a lot longer and the floor a whole lot closer. If you've got your blocks, these bad boys can be right here and just gives you some release. It's important to remember as a beginner too that we want to just get our legs straight. We want to, you know, get as deep as we can. Bend your knees to release the spine versus trying to straighten the legs and round the back. So just remember that as we start to flow through. 
Inhale, we're gonna come into a halfway lift and all this is is just starting to find length in the spine. So think about the crown of the head reaching towards the front of the room. Spine is getting nice and long. We're looking forward. And then as you exhale, fold. If you don't have blocks, that's fine. Take the hands to the shins, as you can see here. And I'm just creating space here. This is just resetting and elongating the spine. And then I come back down into forward fold. Let's try that one more time. Inhale, lengthen, halfway lift. And then exhale, breathe out. Here, we're going to take the hands onto the hips. We're going to come back into halfway lift, draw the elbows and shoulder blades towards one another, and let's come to stand all the way up. This is Tadasana, mountain pose. Hands drop beside you. Standing nice and tall, I'm going to bring you through sun salutations A. Nice and simple, take the arms up. Inhale. Palms are going to come together. Bend your knees, and let's come back to forward fold just like we did before, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Now we're gonna step into high plank. So this is a top of push-up position. It's a lot of core work involved and definitely a lot of muscle engagement. So if you're here and you're like, oh, it's too much, just take your knees simply to the floor like this. That's gonna take the pressure off the hands. And I'm still finding shoulders over wrists. I've got that nice grip in my hands, look forward. And now we're gonna bend the elbows close to the body. The common mistake is trying to go wide, which is gonna not feel great. So keep them skimming the rib cage. We're just gonna come all the way down. From here, you're untucking the toes. The legs are nice and long. Slide the hands back beside the ribs. We're going to come into what's called cobra. This is a baby cobra, so it's just nice and little. The chest lifts off the mat, and the gaze goes slightly forward. As we exhale, we come back down. We'll take two more, and perhaps you want to come up a little higher. And exhale to come down. And again, the elbows stay close to the ribs. We'll take one more inhale, high or low. Exhale to release. To come back to downward dog, we're going to press up onto hands and knees, tuck the toes, and send the hips up with bent knees. And from here, you can do a little pedal in the legs, keeping the hands nice and strong. And then we're going to look forward and again, tiptoe the feet to the top of the mat. Set your feet parallel, find your measure. So your two fists between your two feet, making sure you feel nice and grounded. We'll take the hands either to blocks or shins into a halfway lift. Breathe it out and bow. This time we'll sweep the arms from the floor all the way up, drawing a nice big circle, inhale. And exhale, palms come down to the center of the chest. So that's one full round of sun salutations. You'll see that a lot throughout a lot of vinyasa yoga practices. We're gonna do it two more times, slower and then a little bit quicker. As you're ready, arms come up. Exhale, bend the knees, take the hands to shins or blocks. Take halfway lift, looking forward. And breathe out, exhale. Step yourself back into your high plank pose, top of a push-up position. Take the knees to the mat if you need. Look forward so the neck is long. Elbows stay close to the body as you release to the mat. Plant the hands. Lift up into cobra. Exhale. Take it down. Inhale. Hands and knees. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Look forward to your hands. Step or walk the feet slowly to the top. Halfway lift, hands come to shins or blocks. Breathe it out, exhale. Reach your arms all the way up. And take your hands to your heart. Super simple, we'll try one more time. Inhale, arms come up. Try to find your breath on this round. We're exhaling as we fold. We're inhaling for halfway lift. And we're exhaling to release. Inhale into your powerful high plank. Knees come down. Exhale, we lower. Inhale, it's your cobra pose, high or low. And now here, just notice if the shoulders are caving forward over the heart. See if you can draw them back and then lift the chest. Exhale, release. 
Inhale to hands and knees. And exhale to downward dog. Look forward to your hands. Step your feet to the top. Take a halfway lift. Breathe it out and fold. Sweep your arms high above your head on the inhale. On the exhale, take your hands to the center of the chest. So that in itself is just the perfect way to warm up the body. It uses your whole body. There's a beautiful uh, blend of flexibility and strength and breath work. So just notice how you feel in mountain pose. This is called Tadasana. And we're going to add on. Arms come up on inhale. Exhale to fold. From here, we're going to take halfway lift. And then we're going to start by stepping the right leg back. And we're going to drop the knee. Now, a common complaint here is that the knee doesn't feel very good here. It feels a little bit um, kind of too much pressure on the floor. You can always fold your mat this way or stick a blanket underneath the knee if you're feeling that pressure. And then if you have blocks, I like to use the blocks here because, again, it makes the floor closer. And this is known as low lunge. And this is the perfect way to start to open you up through the front of the hips. If you've got blocks, you can even come up a little bit higher. You can see the spine has a bit more elevation. And um, if you're new to yoga and you're tight, probably the pose will look sort of a bit like this. And that's perfect. It's fine. We're just starting to open up the front of the hips. So try not to get too attached to what it looks like because... There's no winning at yoga. There's no way to like, you know, get a medal for this. We're just trying to open up the body. It's simple and we want to be in a place of curiosity versus judgment. So just being here, if you're feeling like you're really rocking it and you want to take the hands off the blocks, find a little more balance, the arms can stretch up. If you want to get real crazy because you're feeling really good, the back knee can lift up. The only difference here is one's low lunge and one is high lunge. This one is a little shakier because you have to use the legs and your balance here. So just notice, we'll take it down. We'll step the blocks with the hands forward and it's a big leap up to the front or step to come back into your fold. And we'll just simply try the other side. It's inhale to elongate and we'll step the left leg back. And you wanna make sure here that your legs are hip width distance apart versus being on like a tightrope. This is going to feel a little bit too intense. So you want to kind of widen things here. So you've got hip width distance apart. Walk your blocks or your hands back. So if you sit all day, which often a lot of us are guilty of, the hip flexors get really, really tight and condensed here. So this is where low lunge can really open those up and it starts to feel pretty good. Another really important cue here is that the knee is over the ankle. The tendency here is that this knee is too far forward and that's gonna to create too much pressure in your knee joint. So we'll find that right angle, pad the knee if you need, get crazy, get crazier, find your way into whatever shape feels good for you and make sure you're breathing. Which sometimes when we're thinking of trying to do all these things together, we lose the breath. So pick it up right here. And we'll release. Walk the hands or blocks forward. You can kind of creep this guy in like this so you can step it all the way up. Take halfway lift. And breathe it out. So those are your basic lunges. And now we're going to move into warrior. So you're going to step your right leg back. Same way. But watch here, I'm planting the heel down so it spins. So I've got left heel is kind of right crossing at the arch of my right foot. You can stay here or pick the arms up in line with your shoulders. Warrior two. It's a lot of work for this front thigh, so know that. You might feel a little burn going on in here. Back leg is straight, gazes over your fingertips, and the breath is moving. So even though this is a beginner class, these postures are pretty advanced, they're intense, and so you wanna make sure you're breathing. And then we're gonna take the front forearm to touch the front thigh, top arm to the sky. This is side angle. And we'll take one more breath here. And then we're gonna release. Hands to blocks or floor, unhook your back heel, step it forward. Take halfway lift and change sides. 
So I've got a nice long stance, just like we did with lunge, but we're spinning the heel down. My front heel bisects my back arch. So you can kind of check that out back there. Front knee is over the front ankle, similar to lunge pose. And you can stay right here or pick up your arms in line with your shoulders. Another great way to check what's going on here is seeing that the creases of your wrists and your ankles are the same distance apart. So common misalignment here is that it's just too, it's too tight and then we try to bend the knee and the knee goes way over the ankle. So the wider you are, the easier you can find to find the thigh parallel, reaching the arm, dip it into side angle. So my forearm rests on my thigh, left arm to the sky. If it doesn't bug the neck, take the gaze up and breathe. And then release, hands come down, unhook the back heel and step it forward. We'll inhale into halfway lift and we'll breathe it all the way out. We'll sweep the arms high above the head and take the hands to your heart. Tadasana. Now we're gonna take a really simple balance, but balancing on one foot is not always simple, but this is probably the most simplistic balance we have in the practice. So you're gonna shift the weight over into one foot. And you're gonna pick up the other foot and this foot can be placed anywhere inside the leg other than your knee, so that's key. Option one is just to keep the big toe on the mat like I'm doing here, I'm starting to already feel the balance pick up or you can go above the knee into the inner groin like I'm doing here, and then placing the hands together in front of your heart. Now, with balancing, it's normal to fall out, waver, shake, sweat, all of the above. Remember, it's not about nailing the posture, it's just about trying the posture. So here, hands come to the chest, breathing, finding the connection down with the foot that's being placed onto the mat. Arms come up, reaching them over the head. Often in balanced postures, we wanna hold the breath, see if you can still find the fluidity in the intensity. And then you're gonna take the hands to the heart, release the foot, shake the standing leg, and then we'll switch over to the other side. Um, remember too, like if you're here on the mat and things are feeling like you really can't find the balance, you're at home right now, probably somewhere. Grab a wall, use the wall if you need that extra support, especially as you're starting out. That can be really helpful and bring the hands in. I think often the practice can feel really intimidating or you feel like you're not flexible enough to do, to do yoga, you don't have the right outfit, you don't you know, know the right people. It's none of that matters with the practice. It's really about the work that's involved within it. If you're not flexible, that's why we do the practice or you have no balance, that's why we're here to do it and to practice. And so it's really about the inward journey of this practice versus what it looks like. That will come, but it's not the goal. Take the arms up. Every day the balance is different. Some days we nail it, some days we don't. And all of it's perfect, all of it's okay. Take the hands back together in front of the heart. And release. Shake your legs out. And now we're gonna move to the floor. Pretty simple. So you've got your lunges, you've got your warriors, you've got a balanced posture, and now we're gonna start to take some um, postures on the mat. So you can go ahead and sit. And we're gonna take one leg out in front of us, and we're gonna take the other leg in. So it's literally your tree pose, but now we're seated. We're gonna flex the right foot, left heel is in towards the inner groin, and we're gonna sit up nice and tall. And you might already be feeling your hamstring here, which is totally fine, totally normal. If you wanted to go a little bit further, you can start to walk the hands forward. Now, if you had a strap here or a sweater that you kind of sling around your right foot and, and hold on to it, you might find that that helps you. But it's really just sort of a curiosity in this posture. What works for me here? What doesn't? If you feel like you have some opening here, you can walk the hands a little further. 
This posture is great to open up the back of the right hamstring. So just the back of the thigh and then also for the lower back as well. So those of you that have kind of crunchy, painful lower backs, especially if you stand a lot, this is a really nice way to relieve that. And then as we inhale, we'll come up. You're going to keep the same leg stretched. Pull the left knee in and this knee is going to just come across. Your right elbow is going to link across your left knee. Sometimes this can feel confusing, but right elbow, left knee. And we're going to take a twist over to look at the left shoulder. I like to place my hand just gently on this shoulder blade or the, that's not your shoulder blade. <laughs> that's your shoulder. Um, and you're going to look back. And this is a really nice way to tone the digestive system. It's great for the central nervous system. Um, you might feel a couple little clicks in the spine. Totally normal. And then come back to the center, maybe a little counterbalance. Come back, swap your legs. Take the sole of the right foot in. Left leg is long, flexing the left toes, sitting up tall. Also, if you feel like it's harder to bend forward, if you take a prop underneath your sit bones, this angle is going to also help you come forward. So just note that that might be a little bit easier here as well. And forward folds, we're focusing on the breath. We're trying to keep the hips square and finding our alignment. And again, the goal isn't to reach your toes, it's just to get the stretch. And then we'll come up. I'm gonna come off of my block and I'm just gonna do a little swap. Right foot comes across the left leg. My right fingertips plant behind me. Left arm up, elbow comes across the right knee, and I twist away. And the key here is, is to not round and twist. We want to really lengthen and then twist. Great. And then come back through the center to even everything out. You can do a little counter twist. And then we're going to take the soles of the feet together for butterfly, and again, Feel free to hop up onto your block for a little bit of an angling to bring you forward. You can play around with this one too. The heels away from you, you might feel a little bit more through the outer hips. Closer towards you, you may feel more into the inner groin. So just take a look at that, figure out what you need, and then pop it down, walking forward. Just taking a few breaths right here. Relaxing the chin into the chest. Giving your head a little shake, yes and no. And then we'll roll all the way up. And we'll come to everyone's favorite part of the practice, Shavasana. So you're gonna come to lie down onto the mat. Typically the heels are about as wide as the mat. You're gonna lie down. Take the arms about 45 degrees away from the body with the palms facing up. Neutralize the neck and the head by looking straight up, and then if it's comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, see if you can let go of all the tension in the body. So the purpose of our Shavasana really is to complete the practice, to kind of let all the good stretching and strengthening soak into the body. And just to give ourselves just one more quiet moment before we move into the rest of the day. So you want to think about relaxing the bones, the muscles, and the skin. Relaxing any facial expression or holding through the jaw or neck. And it's normal to think here or kind of get caught up, but just see if you can just come back to the way the breath feels and the heaviness in the body. And to come out of Shavasana, if you'd like, it's also your life and you can stay lying down as long as you'd like, but to come out, you'll just wiggle the fingers and the toes, just gently move the hands and the feet a little bit, cradle the knees into the chest and kind of rock a little side to side. 
Ultimately, we'll come to sit again however you'd like, so you can build your block, sit up cross-legged or kneeling. And to close the practice, we'll draw the palms in together in front of the heart. And for me, this is, um, this is a sort of a sign of gratitude for myself, for carving out the time and the space in my, my busy life to pay attention to my physical form, to my mental health and to my emotional body. And just bowing the head in just to sort of seal that moment for yourself. Take a deep inhale and a deep exhale. I hope that this practice has clarified a few things for you and that you leave feeling a little bit more calm and open and uh, yeah, have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you so much.